For those who came in late, welcome. My name is James Patrick McDonald. So I said in the program that I was going to give you five words that will change your life. But before we get to the five words, let's talk about why do I need five words? Why do I need to change my life? And the first thing I can start to talk about is <clears throat> we all want peace. Is there anybody in the room who doesn't want to be peaceful? Right? I, I, I think that's the journey we're on. We're, we're looking. What is it? How do I get peaceful? Maybe this rock will do it. Maybe this workshop will, will give me the peace I'm looking for. And a lot of times we don't even know what it is that's blocking us from experiencing that peace. We just know we're not peaceful. Uh, there's one teacher out there who words it really well, and I love this. He says, there's always this background sense of dis-ease. And I see people nodding. And, and it took a long time in my life for me to recognize that there was this background sense of disease. I thought I was happy. I was living the life. You know, I'm doing the job, climbing the corporate ladder, doing everything I'm supposed to do. But once I started looking, once I slowed down enough to go in and actually look at what my experience was, I started to recognize very quickly that I was miserable. The trouble was I didn't know what miserable was. For me, miserable was happy because I hadn't established a baseline to measure where am I at? Where is, what's my scale of happiness? What's my scale of peace? And until we look, we don't know. But be careful because once we start to look, most people that I work with go, oh my God, I'm miserable and I didn't know it. And miserable might be an extreme word, but you know, use the word that fits for you. The bottom line is I wasn't peaceful. And once I discovered I wasn't peaceful, I was often running on this journey of, of it, it's got to be better than this. What can I do to, to make it better than this? And I did everything. I read the books. I went to the workshops. I bought the rocks and the crystals and stuff that vibrates at the right frequency. I massages, foot baths. It's wonderful. I did it all and, and do it because it all has its place. But if you, I, my guess would be if you came to this talk, you're looking maybe for something a little different. And this is a teaching that, that goes inward. When it goes inward and starts to look, bring back responsibility on me. I'm the one who's responsible for the experience I'm having. It can be very helpful for me to have something that, that helps me to feel better. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but there are other paths. And this path is a path that goes inward. <clears throat> So let's talk for a minute about letting go and acceptance. Everybody take a minute and see if you can bring to mind. Now, when I ask you to bring something to mind, I'm going to support you in allowing the first thing that comes. Because usually when someone says, think about blank, the first thing comes and we go, ah, I don't want that. And then we go and we find something that we think is better. You know what I mean? So I'm going to ask you to think of something or bring to mind something that you're struggling with, someone who irritates you, something you're worried about. Okay? It's there. You already have it. Okay? And, and part of this is trust yourself and go, yeah, something came to mind right away. Because we want to walk through life and we want to go, I'm not bothered, I'm happy, everybody's fine. But if I really look inside, there's always something. You know, it could be the way that person in front of me drove when I was trying to pull into this parking lot. Or it could be something my husband said before I left the house. Or it could be that my partner doesn't put the toothpaste cap back. Whatever it is, okay? The reason I have you look at that is because our experiences offer all the information we need to make lasting change in our lives. And so often the world tells us, don't go inward. Don't look at what your truth is. Don't look at what you're experiencing. Go out here. Find this person who can help you. Find that person who can help you. Find this teacher who's got the message that you want. Get this massage. It's beautiful. And all of that is wonderful. And as I keep saying, there are other things we can do. I found the greatest success in my life when I started looking inward and I started taking responsibility for my feelings, 
And I started saying, you know, and, and self-honesty. That's the real hardest, the hardest part. When I started owning, and I don't like that word owning, but for lack of a better word, when I started looking at me and saying, yes, this is who I am. And I, <laughs> I went through a time period where it was pretty scary because I was like, wow, I'm an evil, terrible, mean person. Okay? But on some level, we all are. I'm a very selfish, per selfish person on some level. Everything I do is pretty much for me. Even if I'm going out and I'm trying to help someone, well, I've decided that they need help. That's about me. <laughs> I've decided that they should do something different. That's about me. And when I do help them, there might be a part of my motivation that's genuine and I want to help them, but there's also a part that I want the good feeling that comes with helping someone. That's selfish, the way the world defines selfish. I wouldn't label it as selfish. I would just label it as, this is me. And when I can get to a point where I can go, this is me, and be okay with it, then I'm not carrying stuff around and I'm not carrying grievances around and I'm not worrying all the time. What is worrying? Someone, I don't know if I read it in a book or something, someone once said to me, worrying is replaying, listen to this, it's perfect. Worrying is replaying over and over in your head a future that you don't want. Why would we do that? That's crazy making. Worrying is replaying over and over in my head a future that I don't want. My kids are out going to prom and I'm laying in bed visualizing their car in a ditch and I can't sleep. And it's not even happening now. I'm just laying in bed. The brain and the ego can drive us nuts. So, One solution to all of this, and you've all heard it before, is, well, you just have to let go. You just got to let go of that. How many times has someone said to you, you got to just let go of that, and it actually made you more mad than you were <laughs> when you were holding on to whatever you were holding on to? And you have to let go, or you have to accept, are both really good techniques when I'm ready to receive that and let it work. I'm interested in the times when it doesn't work. I'm interested in the times when I can't let go. And there's another great teacher out there who words it as, I'm not holding on to that thing, it's holding on to me. And until I look at it, it won't let go of me. As long as I'm continuing to fight and struggle with it. Okay? So I'm very interested in the times, I, the times that I'm not peaceful are the times that I can't let go. Let go of worrying, let go of frustration. And it's the little things. Don't go out and pick the biggest, most dramatic thing in your life that you want to change. Pick the little things, like the guy who doesn't use his turn signal. Or here's one of mine. I'm driving along and someone pulls out in front of me and I have to slow down. And I look in my mirror. Now I'm judging them. They're wrong. And I look in my mirror and there's no cars behind me. They could have waited one more car, right? What am I upset about? The bottom line is what I'm upset about is I have to actually move my foot over to here and push this little...